All right, guys. So uh, here we are. This is the first time we're doing this. We're, we're going to have a, a Charger webcast. Um, I'm Dash O'Neill. I'm the head baseball coach here at Georgia Highlands. Uh, tonight we've got with us uh, my recruiting coordinator and pitching coach, Brock Moss. Uh, say hi, Brock. Hello, everyone. Yeah, there he goes. The personality's jumping out already. Um, we've got uh, our other assistant, Michael Goss, who works with our catchers and our hitters. How you doing, Mike? How's it going, everyone? All right. Um, and then we got three of our players with us. So, um, you know, we got Ryan Smithson, uh, was a sophomore right-handed pitcher for us. Um, he's got like 13 offers on the table right now, but he hasn't decided where he wants to go yet. Um, Big and, dog. Yeah, so, so say hi, Ryan. Hey, I actually have eight, so not 13, just eight. Okay, well, that a way to be humble and, and narrow it down a little bit for anybody that's watching. Um, below him, we've got Connor Perry. Connor is a um, – I guess he was a redshirt freshman. Hey, guys, freshman. how you doing? There he is. Um, and, uh, and he'll be back next year and, and has another year with us. And, and uh, who knows, maybe more. Um, he's a professional junior college player. Um, yeah. He's good enough to join us tonight, and and, uh, and then finally we got we got Palmer Sapp. Um, Palmer is a uh, he's a sophomore middle infielder. Um, join us all the way from from Dawson County over there. What's up, Palmer? everybody? Awesome. So, really, what the whole purpose of this thing is 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 it's really just a chance for us to sit and kind of talk and have a good time, and and uh, just a good excuse for us to hang out with one another and and kind of kind of you know, just see each other a little bit and, and get to speak and, and to give anybody that, that sees this or that's watching an opportunity to see kind of, you know, what our program's about, hear from some of our players and and they can ask us some questions and we can kind of bounce some stuff off of them. And uh, so hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. And, and um, but I think what we're going to really kick off with, um, because, you know, this COVID-19 thing has has really affected a lot of our lives. And if, and if you play sports and, and especially at a higher level where, you um, you know, your season got cut short. I mean, there's so many high school players and college players and even professional players where, you know, the season just came to this abrupt end. And it really highlights how much this game and how much being an athlete uh, means to people. And so really what I, what I would ask you guys to kind of start with is if you wouldn't mind talking for just a minute um, about what it means to you to be a collegiate athlete and like what an accomplishment that is and, you know, why it's so important to you to be able to do this and, and kind of, you know, what it felt like for you when this whole thing happened and, and we had to change gears real quick. Yeah, so I, I'll go first. Um, you know, I've played baseball since I was four years old. So all I really know is sports. Um, if it wasn't for sports, I probably wouldn't. Well, I would be in college, but I'd be working full time trying to pay for college. So it's a uh, to have my season cut short was was heartbreaking, um, but you know I'm glad that I get an extra year of eligibility back, and I'm glad that I can still continue to play the game I love and be a college athlete. Because to me, being a college athlete is 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 it really? You know, I I also I had aspirations to play major league baseball, but you know I'm realistic, so I know that I couldn't. So to play college baseball is like that's that's me making it. So like being a college athlete, I made it. Yeah, you did, man. I mean, you did. You made it. You made it a lot farther than most people make. But um, man, that's awesome. What about what about you guys, Palmer? And yeah, and Smitty, um, to back up your point, man, I mean, for us to be such a small percent, I mean, you know the percent from, like, rec ball to high school and then from high school to some people go play travel ball. And then after that age of 18, you see the decline of people that continue to play. So, <clears throat> For you to uh, achieve that is special, and I feel like we should all hold that special place in our heart for being able to achieve something so great at a point in our life and just continue to build on those successes. Every success leads to other successes, so. Yeah. If you well, continuously on the agenda, what you've done is special so far, and uh, just take that, everything you've learned into life with you afterwards. And that's what it means to be an athlete to me sometimes. Some of the life lessons you take in life afterwards can be the most important. Mm -hmm. Well, Connor, you have a little bit of a unique situation too because you sat out for a year because you were injured. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so as a guy that, that missed a year already and then had to work your butt off just to get <clears> back and then you, you were rolling Crazy. and this thing happens, like, how does that, how does that affect you? I mean, how does, that, how does that shine a light on, like, you know, what's your perspective? Because you were already missing it. 
and you kind of yeah. just got it back, and now it's gone again. And it's so crazy how that happens. Like, literally, it's so funny. Like, the day I tore my UCL and the day we got word that our season was canceled, literally two years apart. So it's just, it was so funny how things lined up. And to be, like, going hard for, like, a year, basically, like, once I could get going, throwing competitively again, it just hurt. But now I think people can feel like when you go through an injury like that and sitting out a year, it really hurts not being able to play the game that you've played for your entire life. And in my case, I got to play three sports because I was blessed enough to be able to do that and play it at a high level up until I had to choose one, obviously. But, I mean, for that to be taken away, people feel that pain and they feel that hurt. Out there. And I think that it's a rebound, and people are just going to be more appreciative and grateful whenever it comes back around. Just like how we're being more appreciative and grateful to spend time with family and stuff once sports are back around. That's the same way we'll feel again. Yeah. It's going to be great. Next year, we're going to build on everything that we missed. So we're going to make it up. We're going to chip on our shoulder, that's for sure, because we missed out on a big year. Yeah, right? Yes, sir. And then, I mean, for me, uh, talking about being a collegiate athlete, I'm kind of piggyback on what Smithson said about how, you know, when the season came to an end, it was almost, I mean, you're, it was more shocked and disappointment at the time because we didn't really know. It, it was almost didn't seem like reality with us getting – we were 25 games in, and it was, for me especially, probably for these two guys as well, the most, the most fun I've had in 25 games. It, it was – it was a tremendous season, a tremendous way to go to to start off a year, and you know, and I it was I remember like it was yesterday when we were up at Bryan College and and Coach O he got us together. We were kind of having a lazy BP. Nobody was really doing much, and he looked dead at us and he he said, you know, all we have is today. You don't know when what what we have after other than today, and we were all kind of like, oh, you know, it's just another game. But that was our last game together, and it's crazy to think that, but. You know, being a collegiate athlete, it's it. If if I if I wasn't playing, then I would just I'd be working full time, and and yeah. I probably wouldn't be going to class every day because I probably wouldn't care, and I probably I probably I wouldn't be as as motivated as I am without being a part of a team because it's not just you, it's everybody else. So, I mean, yeah, it's crazy to think that this is where we are in the world, but we're just it makes me more excited to come back next year and try to try to get the ring that we so were working for all year. So. Yeah, well, you know, when I gave that speech, I was afraid that it could be our last day. I can't say that I actually thought that it was going to be our last day. I mean, I imagined that we would have a little bit more. Um, just like um, that, too, like in the next few days. Yeah, I know. Yeah, just after that Thursday, we had that game, I believe it was on uh, Monday or Tuesday, and then that Thursday, we're inner squadron and and Gavin looked at me and goes, hey, I'm playing second base here. Take my glove, go to the outfield. And I was like, I don't know. And he goes, look, this might be our last practice. And I was out in center field, and Lavoisier was playing second. And we were just enjoying our – I took – I actually took Smithson deep, and I know he <laughs> so. Yeah, but I PR'd that day. That's all that matters. That's right. That's and right. And I dropped Joe out. We were just, you know – Was it a seven? Was on, it a seven you know, we didn't know if it was going to be our last day together or not, so we were just enjoying it. And that was, that was one of the most fun practices of the year because – Nobody was thinking about tomorrow's game or what we're doing. We were just enjoying our enjoying our teammates and just having fun. And it's just crazy to think that it ended after that. So I yeah. would like to say that Coach Moss PR that day as well. Coach he Moss did, did, did uh, even not a PR, but a PR <laughs> twenty nine. <laughs> okay, okay, the dad PR. It was the dad PR. Yeah, Coach PR. Moss did own Twardo that day. He the did. nine zero. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's pretty good when you can uh, be out for like seven, eight, ten years and uh, jump up on the bump and hump it in there at 90 miles an hour in the strike zone. That's not bad. Yeah, it was I'm fun until I finished throwing and couldn't move for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing you guys don't get to see is the agony that he's in afterwards and the, and the way he's complaining. But, you know, and, and coaches, you know, obviously it's, you know, we talk about the players and, and – you know, you guys have your own experiences too, because you know you've got families and you got careers, and, and you're trying to do this. And so, you know, I, I mean, you're on the back end. Like your career as a, as a collegiate player is already over, but now you're on the other side of that, and so you get to work with these guys. And and so, you know, like I guess 
you know, and I, and I know what I think. I mean, you know, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I get just to just to be with guys like this and just to have a chance to work with them. Um, but you get so tight, and you guys are unique as an assistant <clears throat> assistance because you really get to kind of get in there and, and really get tight. And, and so, like, what what's that impact on you when, you know, all of a sudden we turn around and we go, hey, the season's on the line. And, and you know, I mean, with what we were doing and where we were going, like, I don't know, what, how, how was that for you? Mike, you want to go first? Uh, I'll let you take it because I couldn't really hear because he was froze. So I'm going to piggyback off you in just a second. All right, no problem. Uh, you know, I mean, impact on on my side. You know, it, it definitely was a was a change of pace. Um, you know, not something that you would ever really consider. You know, something that was impossible. I, I mean, you know, in the, in the 20 plus years I've played baseball, coached baseball, been around baseball. You know, something like this was was never even a thought. Um, you know, so for the fact that you know we go from being full force practice, job, you know, getting all the, the things to, to help these guys out and, and help them accomplish their goals, moving on and, and, you know, doing our goals here at Highlands that we're trying to accomplish to go from 100 to zero. Um, it was definitely kind of shocking, uh, you know, kind of like, like Palmer brought up, you know, I, I don't really think we had time to be disappointed. Um, it was more initial, j just shock, you know, and, and looking back, um, you know, just to see what we were building, you know, and the opportunity to, to basically have the best season in school history in every measure, um, you know, record, players breaking records, um, a legitimate shot to get to Grand Junction for the first time, you know, that's when the disappointment sets in, um, you know, but luckily we're in a situation as far as we are down the road, you know, here in the 2000s, um, you know, starting a new decade that, that we have technology, you know, so we're able to, to still interact with the guys and, and still fight for the rights of our guys and, and help these guys accomplish everything that they want, um, you know, and still have the ability on our end as coaches to, one, try to learn um, still, you know, we, we can still call other guys and, and, you know, watch clinics and do all these other things, um, you know, so it was definitely something that was shocking and kind of, very unexpected, um, you know, and, but a situation where everybody's just trying to make the best out of it. Yep. Uh, uh, just, just going off that too, uh, you know, I, I'd say I definitely was, was shocked. Um, you know, I was a junior college player and, you know, my sophomore year, we were one game short of making it to Grand Junction. Um, and, you know, as a player, I just, I wanted to get out there. I've heard nothing but great things about it. Um, and then, you know, this season, seeing how everything started to progress, you know, I, I thought we had a legitimate chance and I thought this was going to be, you know, my opportunity to make it out to Grand Junction. Um, so it, it definitely hurt. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely was looking forward to, to getting that experience. And I felt like, too, you know, we had finally knocked off the, the beginning of the year rust and I felt like our guys were really coming together, um, you know, offensively. You know, our, our guys were, were starting to – fully buy into the approach that we were preaching and um, you know we were just putting up good numbers and, and it was just fun to be a part of um, so I, I guess for me just you know I miss going out to the field I miss you know being around this group of guys and uh, you know I miss winning you know we, we only lost four games and and so you know there was a you know it, it was just fun to go out there and, and watch these guys compete and be there and, and try to steer them and, and give them you know, my opinion and, you know, some insight. Um, so I guess just really having that, that pulled away so quickly, you know, really it, it just was disappointing. But, um, you know, I think that, you know, there's a lot of other people who are, are in the same boat as us. Um, but, you know, it definitely, you know, even though it was only 25 games, you know, this definitely, uh, you know, this little bit of a season will, will forever be, you know, in my, in my mind as, as one of the best that I've, I've had as a coach. Absolutely, Mike. Uh, you know, definitely just echoing that. And, and you know, you, you kind of said something that, you know, I should have, have said right away because there's only, you know, one word to think about the, the team that we had this year, you know, and, and that's truly, you know, it was special. It was a special group of guys that, that loved each other. They loved, you know, everything about Georgia Highlands and, and they loved to play, um, you know, and that was definitely probably, you know, looking back, the most disappointing thing 
was you're missing out on a special group of dudes during an entire season. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, for me what – you know, where we were as a team and what we were, what we were working towards, you know, that's really hard to let go of. But I think underneath all of that, like for me, what it is, is I get to come to work and, you know, I get to work with, you know, these 25, 35 guys, you know, on the team that, you know, you end up, you get, in a, you, you get to love them. I mean, you, you know everything about them. You spend all this time together and we work. And, and the, the parts that I miss are the things, you know, is watching Smitty and Trace talking trash back and forth at each other, you know, and, and you know, hearing guys screaming at each other from the dugout during inner squads to make it more competitive and trying to get each other's head and, and you know, and competing. But then, but then walking out of the, walking out of the ballpark, you know, shoulder to shoulder you know, and, and going to, going to have dinner together and, and just going to, to, to have that shared experience. And, you know, for me, being a part of a team is just, it's so much about that, that shared experience. I think you guys all, you know, that's, that's great insight. And so, um, you know, I'll give, I'll give you players another, another chance here, you know, to chime in on any of that stuff if you want to, and then we'll kind of wrap up, um, you know, this episode and, and, um, you know, and we'll, we'll kind of move on from there. But but anything else that you guys kind of want to throw in, just kind of hearing that and, you know, with, with this thing coming to a halt the way that it did? Yeah, so um, like you said about everybody talking trash, but then being <laughs> extremely good friends, you know, there wasn't a day that someone wasn't, you know, yelling at someone across the field, um, getting in someone's butt, just, you know, kind of going at it. But at the end of the day, we were all – we were all brothers and we all loved each other. So that's kind of why we did it. But, you know, it was fun. It was fun. And to have that taken away from us, that, that band of brothers is, is going to be special for the rest of my life for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, all right, guys. So that's it for this episode of our, our charger. Uh, I don't know if we call it a webcast or podcast. I'm not really sure. Um, but, uh, but our, our first go at this, we appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you checking us out. Uh, we've got more coming. Um, so don't hesitate to, uh, to follow us on Twitter, uh, at GHC baseball. You can go to our website, jhcchargers.com. And I think we're on, on Instagram, uh, GHC underscore chargers, follow us, like us, retweet us, all that kind of great stuff. If you have questions for us or there's something you want to hear us talk about, please please shoot us that stuff. Um, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. And, and thanks, guys, for, for chiming in and for all your opinions. Um, we really appreciate it, okay?